Philip Zack. Philip Zack. Right. Okay, to introduce Mr. Philip Zack, I will turn it over to Ranking Member Fallon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and we are pleased today to have Michael Philip Zack. Did I say that right? Close? That's great. All right. From Elk Ridge, Maryland, Mr. Philip Zack is the president of a company called Medis Medisco? Medasco. Medasco, there we go, which is a specialty infrastructure contractor, and we appreciate you coming today to talk about uh, our infrastructure problems. Thank Ranking you so much. Ranking Member Fallon, Chairman Altmeyer, and Congressman Schuster, thank you very much. My name is Michael Phillipsack, and I am the president of Medasco LLC, a specialty infrastructure contractor based in Elk Ridge, Maryland. It's my pleasure to appear today on behalf of the American Road and Transportation Builders Association. ARTBA represents the transportation construction industry that builds and preserves the nation's roads, bridges, transit systems, airports, railroads, and water ports. Medasco is assigning, lighting, traffic signal, tolling, and intelligent transportation system contractor. We perform both construction and maintenance services and work both as a prime contractor for, for various state agencies and as a subcontractor uh, to other contractors, primarily on interchange uh, and major bridge projects. We employ about 140 people and operate primarily in Maryland, Virginia, and North Carolina. According to the latest economic census conducted by the U.S. Bureau of the Census, there are just over 11,000 business establishments involved in transportation construction. Most of these are small businesses. More than 90 percent have less than 100 employees, and the average has about 40 employees. So my industry is largely comprised of small businesses and the improvements we deliver are very important to an even broader range of smaller firms throughout our economy. Small businesses depend on the nation's transportation network to move people and products around town and throughout the country. Highway congestion has become a major drain on the energy and vitality of American small businesses. It negatively affects small businesses in three significant ways. First, when employees are paid by the hour, time lost waiting in traffic or waiting for a delivery means higher costs. Second, when businesses are paid by the job, by the trip, or by the call, traffic congestion that reduces the number per day means lower income for the businesses. Third, and most importantly, when the day is spent dealing with the fallout of highway congestion, scheduling, routing, late deliveries, missed appointments, or unhappy customers, this takes time away from planning and growing the business. The reauthorization of the federal highway and public transportation programs has the potential to be a major benefit to small businesses. Unfortunately, virtually every state is facing budget shortfalls. According to the National Governors Association, 15 states have cut transportation investment in 2009 and 19 states will make similar reductions in 2010. At the same time, revenues flowing into the Federal Highway Trust Fund will fall short of meeting fiscal year 2009 highway investment commitments and not be able to support current levels of spending beyond this year. The only bright spot is the transportation investment from the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. Due to state budget challenges, however, in many cases, uh, in many areas, the stimulus funds are simply enabling states to maintain current activities. It is this confluence of challenges that makes the current push by some to delay the reauthorization until March of 2011 so mind-boggling. We learned the hard way from 2001 to 2005 that uncertainty at the federal level at a time of economic and state budget difficulty leads to a stagnated national effort to deliver surface transportation improvements. Beyond the economic cost of our current system, we are paying too great a price in safety. A recent study by the Pacific Institute for Research and Evaluation revealed that 
deficiencies in the nation's roadway environment contributed to more than 22,000 fatalities and cost the nation more than $217 billion annually. My company specializes in safety improvements, and I agree with the report's conclusion that making the roadway environment more protective and forgiving is essential to reducing highway fatalities and cost. Mr. Chairman, the nation's transportation challenges will not solve themselves, and postponing the reauthorization is not going to make the difficult decisions associated with that bill any easier. Absent major initiatives by all levels of government and the private sector, traffic congestion will get worse, physical conditions will deteriorate, and U.S. competitiveness in the global market pace, place will be further impaired. The House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee has produced a robust and comprehensive reauthorization bill. The bill represents an excellent beginning of the reauthorization process and should be a call to action for all members of Congress. We urge you to push for action on a multi-year reauthorization bill to address the transportation needs of our nation and its small businesses. Thank you for allowing me to speak before you today, and I'd be happy to respond to any questions.